good morning to you all. Thank you for coming here on a Saturday that is at an early hour and um, for sharing ideas to build a better world. Let me begin with this uh, quote that says that the history of man is the history of adaptation. One of the greatest strengths to remain in a planet that is so different. But climate change requires a greater challenge to make a social, economic, and productive deep transformations at a rate that has never been seen before. We have natural climate change, as you might know. That means that uh, climate patterns are changed. And we can see a modification in averages or um, changing the distribution of those events. This is also called climate natural variability because it happens specifically due to natural reasons. The natural greenhouse effect uh, also existed uh, from bef for a long time before we started talking about climate change. Um, the sunlight goes through the atmosphere, a part is reflected, a part is absorbed by the uh, Earth as a heat, and there is another part of that energy that is reflected due to greenhouse gases and becomes trapped, and that leads to global warming when we have an excess of greenhouse gases. And forests help us maintain the balance that is required on Earth in order to make life possible. At the same time, we have anthropogenic climate change. That is the climate change that is caused by human beings. Uh, we started already in the times of the Industrial Revolution. During the second Industrial Revolution, we had several innovations, technical innovations. We started using gas and oil as energy sources. Planes and cars were uh, used more massively. We started using radios and telephones. We started having more communications, and there was an increase in the demand for foodstuffs and resources. What you see here is an image taken by NASA, and at the end, when you see zero, that is the year 1950, that shows the fluctuations uh, that uh, existed over time in previous years. That is the natural climate changes that took place. And then you see the particles of, uh, or the millions of particles of carbon dioxide uh, that increased as from 1950. That is the time when we started with the Industrial Revolution and with all human developments. Of course, we expanded. This is a picture of the city of Sao Paulo just to show you the growth of uh, cities um, um, with a lot of concentration of uh, population in urban areas. We also saw a significant rise in the use of energy at, in households. This is a picture from San Francisco. Next one. The use of cars also increased. When we talk about climate change, we tend to focus a lot on the use of cars, on transportation, energy, and of course, industrial processes that also generate other greenhouse gas emissions that contribute significantly to this global phenomenon. Cattle breeding, of course, that is another form of uh, gas emissions uh, with methanes, um, although it is at a lower concentration, has a bigger effect than carbon dioxide and the clearing of trees, deforestation, because in order to raise cattle and to uh, grow f um, crops, we need land. This is a chart that shows the greenhouse gas emissions by economic sector. This is usually what um, decision makers take into account when they plan measures uh, to reduce uh, the effects of greenhouse gases at the global level. In blue, we have electricity and heat production. 
this accounts for the largest portion of uh, greenhouse gas emissions. This is a sector that contributes the more the most with 25 percent then we have agriculture forests and other land uses that account for 24 percent and then transportation 14 percent industry 21 percent other types of energy 10 percent and buildings or constructions with a six percent share this is data from the ipcc these are the potential scenarios in CO2 emissions. What do we mean by this? In the Paris Agreement, a limit was set at the most temperature should only have an increase of 2 degrees Celsius, making a big effort to keep it no more than 1.5 uh, degrees over the pre-industrial levels of temperature. In the blue line, if we make an effort and if we try to meet all the uh, goals, we will be able to be under those two degrees Celsius uh, established as a limit by the Paris Agreement in order to maintain human life on Earth. If we don't do such a good job, we would be in this yellow uh, area. And if we continue as we are now, we will end up with this red scenario with an increase of more than four degrees Celsius. So we are now uh, facing a time that requires that we act and we should have already started long ago. Not only do we see an increase in parts per million terms, um, as we can see here, between 1964 all the way to 2013, there has also been a phenomenon of acceleration. Um, before the Industrial Revolution, we had 280 ppm, and now we are around 400, which is a lot. What are the general impacts of climate change? Of course, as you know, floods in various economic areas. This accounts for almost 80% of losses. This is a model made by Climate Central. That is the school of law in Buenos Aires. This was also replicated in other cities of the world. And this was done with Buenos Aires to see what would happen if we reach that limit of two degrees, uh, the city would look like this. And if we are in the red scenario with four degrees um, increase, we would be in this complicated situation. Climate change also brings about the desertification, and that means that there will be no arable land in certain areas for crops. These are some forecasts from the United States. They say that there will be 200 million displaced people in 2050. And in order to give you uh, perspective and put things in context to the right, here you see the number of people who fled from the Syria war, 13 million, vis-a-vis -vis 500 and 200 million displaced people according to the United Nations uh, forecasts. As we have seen, we started increasing uh, gas emissions into the atmosphere as a result of the Industrial Revolution. This led to global warming and then we can analyze the impact of climate change. And to analyze this, we always talk about mitigation and adaptation measures. Mitigation to reduce the emissions and adaptation re means all those actions required to be in place for us to adapt to those changes that are already here. At the international level, because climate change has no borders, this is a global phenomenon and it does not uh, abide by political boundaries. We may say that in 1979, the first conference on climate was uh, held. An intergovernmental group of experts on climate change was created. Um, the first uh, report was created. And in 1999, the Framework Convention of the United Nations on Climate Change was adopted. This panel of experts 
experts on science was established by the well, um, by weather organization, World Meteorological Organization. They have scientists who analyze all the scientific evidence available across the world and they compile this information. You have some summary reports outside this room. You can look at them. So they provide the scientific basis for governments to ideally create public policies based on scientific evidence, which is what we lack many times. These are the reports, uh, copies of which will be available. So there are three working groups, one on the scientific basis, another one on vulnerabilities, another one on mitigation, and, and, uh, and a summary report for politicians. So, how does uh, the Conference of the Parties work? This is the global meeting where that brings together all heads of state to discuss what they will do with a certain global issue. The parties or the countries participate. You also have international organizations like the United Nations, press agents, the mass media who disseminate information, and then civil society organizations. This is just an example of the latest uh, COP in Poland last year. There were different negotiation rooms. This is a picture of the Paris Agreement that laid the foundations for all the actions to be taken by countries as from 2020. And these are the key negotiation issues um, that are addressed in this type of conference. Um, over the years, um, the work on these issues has to be uh, deepened. So mitigation, adaptation, losses and damages uh, that are already being studied are included there. You will have available all this detailed information to you. So beyond the ratification of countries, uh, countries that undertook the commitment to um, deal with climate change through mitigation and adaptation measures, this is not enough to limit the increase in temperatures. So we have to go beyond the Paris Agreement. We have to make additional efforts to secure human survival. The next COP will take place in December 2019 in Chile. So let's talk about the impacts of animal farming. With uh, climate safe, we were interested in addressing this issue because whenever we talk about energy and transportation uh, in relation to climate change, we see a very close link between livestock farming and uh, transportation. Let's go back to this pie chart. 14% of gas emissions uh, are produced by cattle breeding activities. This is a significant percentage. And at the global level, more than 70% of land uh, used for food production are being used for cattle. And the remaining percentage is um, covered with crops. Out of that a percentage, a third is used to feed those animals. So imagine how much land would be available for producing food for human consumption if we didn't uh, consume that m so many products derived from farming. So forests and jungles contain more than half of the biodiversity on Earth. We have other systemic areas uh, that can help us reduce greenhouse gas emissions. This is an example from Brazil. Of course, these are not just trees. We have a lot of diversity there. And in terms of water use, agriculture accounts for almost 70% of all the extractions of water. So it is very important for us to focus on water use. And in order to produce a food derived product, you may need um, water used seven times more than to produce a different foodstuff that has the same amount of protein. So we need much more water to produce these um, animal-derived products. So 
when we talk about um, resource-based economy, we need to talk about efficiency, and efficiency also in the food production system. Beef, eggs, and dairy product the production is much more expensive in terms of the use of natural resources than producing vegetable um, sourced uh, foodstuffs. Considering all this information, international organizations such as the FAO and the Environmental Agency of the United Nations have promoted the use and consumption of low environmental impact products. And of course, we have a strong involvement in that promotion. In Argentina, if we look at the national inventory of greenhouse gases that was published in 2017, containing data from 2014, we can see that cattle breeding, although it uh, may appear second in other places at the global level in Argentina, this is the sector that is ranked first with 20.7% of emissions, surpassing the emissions caused by transportation and electricity. I only have 10 minutes left. but. This sector is only including enteric fermentation and manure. Enteric fermentation is when the cows um, provide, produce methane, then the control of uh, excretions on pasture lands. Here we are not talking about energy used for transportation and other gas emissions uh, also related to this sector. And this is the sector that emits the highest number of uh, greenhouse gases in our country. This is the inventory. You can also find it online. It has a lot of information. So I'm sure you won't be able to read this from the back. On green, you have cattle breeding. In terms of the slaughtering of animals, in Argentina, 13 million cows are raised, 720 million broiler chickens, 15 layers uh, hens, and 4 million uh, pigs. So this is a high level of production of uh, animals for human consumption. A cow produces 300 liters of methane per day, and there are approximately 53 million live uh, cows in the Argentine territory. Let me go back. Let me take a step backwards. It is also important uh, to consider something that we are not uh, discussing now because we are talking about environmental impact. If uh, we hope to preserve uh, human life uh, without exploiting other human beings, I hope that we can also stop uh, exploiting animals. In terms of human nutrition in a resource-based economy, it is possible to have a plant-based uh, diet, also a diet based on other products to be developed, like the meat producing labs. It would be animal meat, but without the suffering component. This has to do with the use of energy. This is traditional beef, and this is uh, cultured meat. Look at the greenhouse gas emissions as a result of beef production vis-a-vis -vis the production of cultured meat. Look at the columns here. Use of water, it is reduced. Uh, land use, it's almost non-existent. In terms of uh, nutritional um, fundamentals, Science tells us that beef is not essential because vegetarian diets that are well planned, those fully vegetarian or vegan uh, diets are healthy and they can provide benefits to health and also prevent uh, the and help in the treatment of certain diseases. So this will not only result in a benefit for the planet and also for the life of other animals, it would also bring about uh, benefits for human health. In summary, what uh, we talked about natural climate change, anthropogenic climate change that is caused by human beings, the general impacts of climate change, international negotiations, the impact of cattle breeding, on animal farming in particular. We hope that the discussion is increased in this area and climate change in Argentina. 
before moving on to the next slide, I would like to say that we are in a state of climate emergency. Many young people took to the streets uh, quite recently asking for the governments to declare the climate uh, state of emergency. To, for governments to focus on the need to reduce gas emissions and also to uh, undertake measures uh, to adapt to the coming changes. So, let me say that we are part of the safe movement that is made up of groups of people from all parts of the world who witness how the animals go into the slaughter's uh, house they were deeply moved, so they wanted to raise more ethical awareness about animal suffering and build an animal justice movement. This movement started in Canada in 2010. There are more than 560 groups to, uh, today all over the world. Climate Save Argentina is actually an environmental pillar within this international movement and focus on environmental and climate science, we are interested in showing that this also has an impact on our, the way we live and the world we live in. I thank all the providers of information, uh, like Boycott, they have a booth outside this room. They have a vir virtual reality booth that is very interesting and a climatando. I also thank them for the information and thank you all for being here.